Seth Bling is a legend. There's no two ways about it, okay? There's no fighting me on this one. Seth Bling, when I first started out playing around with Minecraft Redstone, Seth Bling was the person that I watched. And throughout the years of Minecraft evolving, he's continued to create groundbreaking things in the game and stuff that still to this day makes my head hurt. I mean, he just recently made a video where he plays Minecraft inside a chest. He's made Minecraft in Minecraft. <laughs> it's, oh, it's just crazy. Now, why am I saying all of this? Well, it's because Seth Bling recently got in contact with me and asked me if there's anything that I would like in the game that isn't currently in the game. And my answer always to this question is colored slime blocks. Different colors of slime blocks that stick to all other blocks apart from themselves. And he did it. <laughs> he actually did it, which is... I, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say, but he's managed to make it work in data pack form. And if you want to know more about the colored slime blocks, I'll put a link to Seth Bling's video down in the description, end cards on the screen, everything like that, because I, I mean, you need to check this out. But now it's time for me to try and build some bits. First things first, piston door. And this is the first concept that I came up with. So obviously if you were to do this with regular slime blocks, the first time that you activated it and the door closed, all of the slime blocks would stick together and you'd end up with one big and movable block that you're not going to be able to do anything with. Instead, with the coloured slime blocks, we now have lines of blocks that can slide past one another. So hopefully, we should end up with a really cool opening and closing sequence. Now, my goal for this one is to make sure that all of the triple piston extenders down at the bottom and all of the top triple piston extenders are all synchronised. So each... Each line of blocks moves forward at the same time and also gets retracted at the same time, so it all looks perfectly in sync, but I realise uh, this uh, that could be a bit of a challenge. Right, let's have a look at this extension then. So we flick the lever. <laughs> oh, that, looks, that already looks really cool. And it's actually surprisingly quite fast. So I had to slow things down a little bit because of the way that these, these slime blocks work, but that still looked quick. That was very fluid. Now, if we do the retraction, I, I'm just wondering what will actually happen. Okay, so that's actually a little bit more positive than I was expecting. If we were to just extend out this pulse a tiny bit, which I was kind of thinking about doing anyway, uh, we might be able to retract these pistons one block further down, and then it's literally a fire, a fire, and then another fire, and that's it. And I promise you, I know you guys laugh at me down in the comment section when I say this stuff, but it is actually quite simple. <laughs> <laughs> I know it looks like a big mess right now, but trust me, it's pretty simple. If I place in these blocks here, we might actually have a working one. So let's just see what happens, okay? So the extension is all good. We knew that was going to work. Then what happens on the way down? <laughs> hmm. Uh, none of none of that circuitry ended up working, and it's because of this. Very embarrassing, considering I said it was simple so many times. So if we try that again, if we flick the lever, that's the extension, and then... There we go, everything has been retracted down into the floor, and that looks as good as I expected it to. Oh. And now the same timings have been mirrored up to the top, so hopefully it should all work. And these will now be perfectly synchronized between one another. Let's hook all of this up. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm definitely excited right now. If this works, it will probably be one of the coolest looking piston doors I've ever created in Minecraft. Oh! <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Oh, that is so, so cool. <laughs> that... Oh, that is the best. Coloured slime blocks are the best. Look at that! <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry that my emotions are running high. I'm just genuinely very excited about this. Okay, so doors obviously interesting. We'll come back to those. I definitely want to try and make something walking though. Now, building legs with regular slime blocks is something that I fully understand. I've done it a bunch of times now. Building legs with coloured slime blocks and having all sorts of different options available actually is... <laughs> <laughs> it, it requires a totally different way of thinking. Now, the reason that I know this is because I actually designed this leg module right here while I was on a call to Seth Bling when we were doing feasibility tests to see if these slime blocks actually behaved like colored slime blocks should. And it threw up some things that I hadn't even thought of when I said that I wanted colored slime blocks in the game. The thing that makes life tricky 
is the fact that the slime blocks, although they don't stick to one another, they still stick to the components. Which means that components that you would think belong to a specific part of the circuitry actually stick to other parts of the circuitry without you thinking about it. Which means that you have to install these things here. Now this is literally what I call a slip past. It allows this part of the circuit to slip past this other part, which gives us a functioning leg. I understand that this is all very technical stuff, and that's probably gone over a lot of your heads, but it's interesting. Quite some time later, and I, I seriously mean quite some time later, I might, and I'm gonna emphasize the word might, have got the motor working for this thing, which for anyone who's familiar with slime block walking or flying machine motors, Normally they're a lot bigger than this. This is quite compact. If this actually works, then I'll be very impressed. So I'm gonna grab myself a flint and steel and we're going to update this piston. <gasps> oh, I thought that worked then. It almost did. <coughs> I sucked in so much air when I did that that my, my throat is seized up. This is where it's broken. This is where it's broken. I'm not sure what happened. I guess that observer didn't fire. Maybe something stuck to it that shouldn't have stuck to it. That's probably the most likely. And a long, long time later once again. This might just be it. This compact little module right here. Is, is it working? It's actually working. But we've lost a leg. <laughs> we've got a hopping pot. Now, once I got that fixed, I thought it'd be a good idea to just build the rest of the robot. And I think we can all agree this guy is probably the most adorable walking robot I've ever constructed in Minecraft. I mean, look at him. his little face. He's got his little arms out. And the body of this thing is so, so compact and so much smaller than a lot of Simmer flying machines I've made in the past. And it looks so much cooler with all the different colors running through it. I am I am absolutely chuffed to bits with this thing. Even if it doesn't move, I'm, I still think it looks really, really cool. But I am I'm a fan. Now we just have to see if it works. Time to make a million backups. And then spend multiple hours fixing it because, yeah, no, it, it didn't run. But after setback, after setback, after setback, this guy with his smug little face, I've gone from thinking it was adorable to just looking really smug. This is what I had to look at every single time it totally broke. Just this guy giving me those eyes. After all that, I think we could be good to go. So my flint and steel is at the ready and off we pop. So legs are walking, arms are moving. This guy is actually working. <laughs> and he looks... It, it, it's kind of a little bit like it's it's almost a little bit in the uncanny valley His leg movement is really kind of natural looking and everything looks solid This looks like something out of a Boston Dynamics video <laughs> This is like one of those those robots that they make that they kick and abuse all the time very very cool very cool I Like colored slime blocks a lot I really, really like colored slime blocks. And you know what, I can't help myself. I've got another door design that I wanna work on. So the front of this thing looks like a normal four x four area, doesn't it? We're going to turn it into a four x four door eventually and we all know what the piston layouts for that look like. But if we take a look around the back, you can see that actually there's a something different going on here. We've got little quadrants involved here and we also have these little quadrants too. I think the important thing about colored slime blocks is that you can get really creative with your opening and closing sequences. So hopefully with this setup here, we can create an awesome looking sort of vault door-esque design, but it has a completely flat front. And in theory, it should actually be quite simple. He says, I, I know I've said that a lot in today's video and a lot of the things haven't looked simple, but trust me, this should be simple-ish. Part one has been completed and that, and that, and that is, that's embarrassing. I don't think I'm ever going to say that something is simple again. It always seems to just backfire and smash me in the face. Thankfully, it was a fairly simple fix. So now the bottom ones are all done. They're looking good. And also the top ones 
are looking pretty cool as well. So now I'm going to work on the little double piston extenders, which are going to remove these blocks from the center. And we should end up with a really nice opening and closing sequence for this thing. I also just want to say, I think, look at this double piston extender. <laughs> I mean, I was just playing around with some circuit ideas and things. Do you remember when they used to be like the size of a room? Like someone would say they've made a new double piston extender design and it would be like 10 by 10 blocks. Okay, I'll be the first to admit that things have gotten slightly less simple. This is actually a little bit more complicated than I was expecting. But look at that. So that is stage one. All of this is fully synchronized. That is an advert. This is why colored slime blocks should be in the game. Just this alone. It, oh, it's just the best. But with that being said, I think now that the door's done, I actually kind of prefer it when it's just those corner sections because all of the stuff happening in the center, at least the way that I've wired it, adds a lot of piston action, lots of visible pistons going on. And it just, it doesn't look quite as cool which is quite surprising to me. So, I, I mean, a part of that is the fact that my redstone circuitry is maybe a tiny bit clunky with the way that the pistons are working. There's a lot of pistons firing and it's, it's not the fastest thing in the world. So maybe if someone was to do it quicker, it might end up looking cooler. But I mean, I just, I love those corner bits. I wish we could do the whole door in just corner bits. Now, I think before we move on to the next design, I actually just want to sit down and have a chat with you about something because it's quite interesting. Despite the fact that these colored slime blocks are making life a lot easier and making things possible that weren't previously possible, it's amazing how much you have to rewire your pre-hardwired brain to think with colored slime blocks. I'm so used to slime blocks behaving like slime blocks that as soon as a change has been made, it's like my brain's like, what on earth is going on here? It's really, really strange. And you wouldn't believe how many times I've been caught up in just the simplest mistakes in my redstone circuitry. Anyway, there is one more thing that I want to try out in today's video, and it's kind of more of a concept than anything, but I just want to see if it's possible. So what I'm thinking is, is large movable piston walls. So, if we power this back piston here, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. Ready? Almost very interesting. The only ones that caused issues were the ones that are directly in line with the redstone blocks. Now, I wonder if that's to do with update order from the data pack that Sethling's made, or if it's hard-coded Minecraft. Now, the reason I have this massive wall of redstone blocks as opposed to using observers to power the slime blocks which power the pistons is because the way that Sethbling has made this data pack is he's actually given stained glass the properties of slime blocks with some extra functionality, obviously, to not stick to different colors of slime blocks. So these are actually bits of stained glass, which means that they are transparent. They don't transmit redstone signals unlike actual slime blocks. One day later, I was messing around in this little testing world that I've got here, waiting for this video to render, and I actually came up with this, which is a slightly smarter system. It involves observers and things, and you can see that we now have a fully functioning piston wall. So this is expandable upwards, it's infinitely expandable upwards, and it's also expandable side to side as well, which means that you could push large structures using slime blocks in flying machines. So imagine how big my walking house could be with this game mechanic. <laughs> we, could, we could do a walking mansion. <laughs> this discovery has of course been bittersweet though because it means I now have to stop rendering my video and add something into the edit and then re-render it. I mean, what a waste of time that was. But with that being said, I think we can all agree Sethling has done a just an incredible job at doing this considering that all of this is just using commands for those who don't know how data packs work it's essentially a line of command blocks just in note block form obviously Sethling will explain this in a lot more detail it is completely mind-blowing to me that he's managed to make this function so well i've been playing with it all day i i woke up at eight in the morning it is now half nine at night so i've been playing for 13 and a half hours i've been doing loads of experiments lots of them you haven't seen in this video and it's alarmingly stable considering the fact that it's done through command blocks so i am blown away but i'm also very impressed by the possibilities of colored slime blocks i definitely think they should be a feature in vanilla Minecraft. I'm definitely going to make the case for them because seriously, they are so much fun to play with and they open up all sorts of possibilities while still feeling like 
a vanilla component. They definitely still feel like a part of vanilla Minecraft. This doesn't feel modded in the slightest. So let me know your thoughts. I'd be interested to see what you guys come up with when it comes to coloured slime blocks as well. But anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm not quite out. This is my new outro. I'm every single time I end a video I'm just gonna do 18 seconds of me talking nonsense. Um, I mean, I guess you should check out Seth Blink's video link will be on the end screen Also check out the latest film on the phone channel link will be on the end screen 18 seconds is a lot shorter than I thought and I've got so much important stuff to say